Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, I'm often quite enthusiastic about new tech. Give me a new smartphone processor, a microcontroller board, some new programming language, and I'm genuinely enthusiastic about what it is. Now, occasionally, I'm kind of like, wow, that is impressive. And I certainly had that when I first started to use uh, large language models like ChatGPT. In fact, the initial kind of like shock was, was palpable. And only after a while when I started to really understand how they worked and why they worked, and then I was able to see the limitations that I kind of that kind of came down a little bit. But of course the point is, is that we, you know, LLMs, they, they, they hallucinate, they can get facts wrong, they can, they can say the wrong things, they can mislead. And, you know, the point is really, is that's not where the power of these large language models lie. If you want a history lesson, go and read a book. If you want to check a fact, go and look it up. You don't need uh, an LLM to tell you dates and times and, and, and things like that. It's okay that it gets some facts wrong. Why am I saying that? Because the important thing is, is that it's able to process human English natural language or other language input. And then you can do something with that. Now imagine a world where you can communicate with an automaton of some kind, and then it can perform the task that you say. This is what we see in, in, in science fiction. Now today I'm gonna to show you a program that gives ChatGPT access to your local files. Now that might sound a bit frightening, but actually if you think about it, all the stuff that we do every day is just manipulate data on our computers, whether that's a video file like this one I've edited here, whether that's an Excel spreadsheet, whether it's a PDF document, whether it's an email, all we're doing is manipulating data and we do it manually. We type out that email again, we rename those files, we copy that from here to here, we add in a new row, we're doing it all the time and a lot of our jobs are based on this, this is what we do. But automation is the key to making that easier. It won't replace us, but it makes that job easier. So how about if I could talk to something with a natural language and it knows how to manipulate that data as well. So I'm gonna show you that today and truly it's mind blowing. Now it's a bit rough around the edges. It's just text based at a terminal. But if you can imagine a more polished version of this, if you can imagine one that you can talk to with your natural, with your voice, and then it translates that into text, and then does the thing, this truly is a game changer. This is what all the home assistants that we are using today, Siri and, and, and so on, should be. And I want you just to come on a journey with me to see the potential of what this program I'm about to show you. Okay, enough of the, of the enthusiastic introduction, let's get cracking. Okay, so most of this is over on the command line, over on my laptop, but just bear with me and witness what we can do now by just typing in a sentence and getting a computer to do something, actually automate something and do it correctly. Okay, so the project we're going to be using is called Open Interpreter, a new way to use computers. Open Interpreter lets large language models run code on your computer to achieve tasks, to complete tasks. Now it's an open source project, so you're gonna need a couple of things before you go ahead and install it. The first is you're gonna need Python. So this will run on Windows, on Mac OS, and on Linux, but you're gonna to need to make sure you have at least Python 3.10. I won't go into how you install that in this video. However, here's a good point. If you don't know how to do it, just go over to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, how do I install Python 3.10 on uh, you know, Windows or whatever? And it will, it will give you some pretty good instructions on how to do that. Of course, that's the beauty of things like ChatGPT. And talking of ChatGPT, a second thing you'll need is an open API key because this open interpreter can run in two ways. It can run uh, Code Llama locally, and I've got several videos about how you can run these LLMs locally on your machine, or it can use ChatGPT over the internet, but you need an API key to do that, and you have to pay for that. I've been using ChatGPT 3.5 because basically it's cheaper, and so far I haven't even run up $1 worth of costs in all of the playing around I've been doing with this. Uh, but of course, if you use ChatGPT 4, it's going to be a bit more expensive, 
expensive, but the advantage is the capabilities are so much greater and it's quicker. So you go over the internet, you get ChatGPT's response, and then it tells you, uh, you know, it starts to execute the code. Okay, so once you've got an, an open API key which you're paying for, and you've got Python 3.10 installed, then you can go ahead and install Open Interpreter. So this is the project here over on GitHub. As I said, it is open source, and installing it really is a breeze. You literally do pip install open interpreter and it will just go ahead uh, and install it. They do have some documentation about how you can maybe uh, install it on, uh, you know, with a local GPU if you want it to work with that and so on. They've got quite a lot of documentation here. So there's lots to go through if you get stuck with something. But I just basically did the pip install like it says there and it just worked. So that's really good. So if you've got a good install of Python, Got your open API key, you do that install, and then that's it. Now, everything from here, you need to go over to the command line. If you look up here, there is going to be a um, get early access to the desktop application. There's going to be a desktop application version of this. It's not out yet, but you can. this is a good way to get in to see its capabilities. And then when the desktop application comes out, I'm sure I'll revisit it uh, and do a follow-up video. So over to the command line. Okay, so here I am on the command line uh, on my, I'm doing this on a Mac. As I said, it does work on, on the other main operating systems as well. And to run it, all you need to do is type interpreter. Okay, and I'm gonna do minus F, which is the fast version, which means it uses ChatGPT 3.5 rather than uh, version four. And once you do that, it will go ahead. Now, it says to me a couple of things here. First of all, if you wanted to use something like uh, Code Llama, there is a way of running that using minus minus local. And because I haven't passed in the minus Y parameter, which I will do later, it will double check that you are happy for it to execute the code. And, and here's an, an interesting item because as I've been doing it, I always wanted to check what it was doing. And then ultimately I was just like, yeah, put in the minus Y, it can go ahead and do it. So you're, you're building up a level of trust. Now the important thing is this, if you're not actually deleting anything, if you're not actually gonna lose any data, if, I, if I'm saying like open up this file, which I'm gonna show you, you can do that later, then it's not so much of a problem if it goes ahead and automatically does it. If you're starting to fiddle with files, like move that here and delete that there and copy that there, then maybe you wanna check with the minus Y what it's doing. But of course you need to understand Python because it creates Python code and then uh, executes it. Anyway, let's just start with something simple. How many files do I have in the desktop folder my photos so this is a very simple thing basically i'm asking it how many files are there in that folder but the point is here i'm asking it in a natural language you can imagine in the future i can do this with my voice and it will go ahead and, and understand what i'm saying and i'm asking it to work on my computer so this is working on my computer it's actually going to look at things locally here which brings up a whole new dimension to what you can do with chat gpt so it's going to go ahead and say well that's what the code you need to run is and it's going to try and run it so let's see what happens there you go it's run that and it said there are 72 files in there which is correct there are 72 files in there now if i had with that with the minus y i wouldn't need to confirm it it would just go ahead and tell me there are 72 files in there okay so let's uh, let's just look at that folder quickly okay so there is the folder and uh, that's uh, all got jpeg files in. now they all start with img and then followed by a number let's get chat gpt and open interpreter to do something with all those files a mass rename a bulk rename for me without me having to go in there and and use some other program or try to rename these individually let's see what we can do rename all the jpeg files in my desktop folder my photos remove the img prefix and change it to photo okay let's see if it manages uh, to do that if it understands what i'm trying to say so it's going to go into there and it's gonna rename all the files with the word photo at the beginning. That, that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and run that and uh, see what it does. I've renamed all the files in my photo with the imagery. Okay, let's go over to the folder and see if it actually did it. 
And there we go, there is the same thing. And now it says photo on all of those files. So <laughs> I've just had a bulk rename and I just spoke to it in English, in a natural language saying, this is what I want to achieve. Actually, literally last week, I wanted to do this same thing and I started searching around for bulk rename tools and how can I do it with, with you know, kind of uh, regular expressions and all this kind of stuff. And look at that, it can just do it for me. Okay, now it can do more than that, of course. So for example, uh, you know, here, here's, a, here's a good one. Uh, do I have an Excel file on my desktop? Now, of course, I know that I do, okay? And it's gonna come back uh, and say, would you like to run this code? Uh, yes, and it's looking for this. Yes, you have an Excel file named sample.xls on your desktop, which is correct, okay. What is that Excel file about? Okay, there's a good question. What's it about? What, what's in that file? Okay, I haven't specified the name. I've just said that Excel file. Now it's going ahead and it's writing some Python for me. So we're gonna go ahead and say, yes, you can run that Python. Okay, and so it's opened up the file. It's got, it's looked at it and goes, the Excel file, okay, contains information about different food categories. Here are the first few rows. So it's gone ahead and opened up that file, understood it and looked at the things here. And it is, it's about different food and it tells you about the different columns. So it's like, oh, wow, okay, I've got a spreadsheet about food. Okay, um, using that file, list 10 foods with low carbs. Okay, there you go, if you wanna go on a low carb diet, let's see what it can tell me about, do you wanna run the code? Yes, remember. Okay, now it's coming to a problem, it says I couldn't do that. So it's gonna have another go, it tries to fix it. And then we say, yeah, go ahead and run that. So it's, it, it, so it's saying it uh, still can't do it. Uh, so it's trying again, it's trying a third attempt to see where it can get the, the names out of there. And there you go, it managed it. So it's self fixing, it actually realized that the code it ran didn't work. So it tried a different attempt and then it tries again. And here we go, it's listed for me, 10 low carb files from that uh, from that file. Look at that, 10 of them listed there, coffee and uh, basically animal crackers. <laughs> That's what you need. Okay, now you can do even more than that. Now I'm gonna get it to plot me a graph Actually, it doesn't turn out to be very pretty because of this file that I'm using. But anyway, look, uh, but it's, it's an idea. Create a graph using that Excel file of the top 10 foods with a high carb count. And of course, if you're a if you're a, a, an Excel person, you've got lots of stuff and you like to create graphs from it, you like to sort it, you like to interrogate it. Here we go, I can get uh, I can get this done for you just by typing in a natural prompt. So when your boss comes around and says, can you please create me a graph from that file that, you know, of the blah, 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 sales figures for this or, you know, whatever, it can go ahead and do it for you. Would you like to run this code? Yes. And there you go, as I said, it's not that pretty because these labels are, are so uh, long, so it, it doesn't really reflect. But you can see here that it's listed all of these high carb things. It's given you their carb count as a graph there. And of course, we, if it was a different file, you know, this would be much, but the point is I asked it for a graph using an Excel file that I've got on my, and it just did it for me. It just created it you know, there you go, that's what you want in. Of course, as I said, if you've got sales figures or stock prices or salaries or whatever it is that you, you know, you're tracking, you know, here it is. And it can just do it for you by typing in a, a, an English sentence. Absolutely fantastic. Now, what we're going to do before we go on now to look at another fuzz, I'm going to put in that minus Y now so that it runs uh, automatically. Okay, so how about this? Do I have any PDF files on my desktop? You have one PDF file on the desktop, and there it is. Now we can see it, Lincoln Gettysburg Address. So now we know what's in that file. Okay, uh, create a summary of that PDF file. Okay, so I don't know what it's about. Uh, of course I do, but it, I'm just gonna get it to tell me what it's about. It's gonna go ahead and read it, there you go. It's opened up the file, it's read it, the summary of the file, and then it starts talking about the Gettysburg Address. So it's actually worked out what it was, read the contents, and then gone ahead and written me a, a, a summary of what's in that file. So, you know, absolutely amazing. It can just do whatever I ask. So just the 
possibilities of what you can do here now in terms of productivity are amazing. And as I said, if this becomes voice activated, so I can just literally talk to my computer and say, do this, do that, send that file to George and, you know, uh, and, and, you know, send it. You know, oh, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. One more little thing that I've, it does have access to the internet. So I'm going to say this, using curl, get the weather for london now the reason i'm saying using curl is that there are some free services you can use curl to get the weather okay and there you go and it's just giving me now the weather for london now of course that bit up at the top here you can see actually what's returned from curl but it's parsed that and it's given me now uh, a, a little thing if you just say get the weather it does try to use some websites that actually you need an api key for and so on and so on and so on so it doesn't quite uh, work as well now one thing i haven't mentioned is that uh, because I've tried all these things before, if it doesn't have a particular library installed or a particular thing it needs for Python, like the thing to read PDF files, it will say, I'm going to go ahead and install this library for you. So the great thing is, is that it can actually download and install the things it needs to, to carry on working. So again, opening the Excel files, it needed something. It went ahead and did it. Now it's done all that before to save time, but it just says, do you want to install that? And it will do a pip install of something or other that it needs, and then it will just carry on. So it even knows when it doesn't have the right software installed so that it can go ahead uh, and you know, and do it for you. And of course, because this is ChatGPT, you can do all the other things you can do with uh, ChatGPT. You know, so I could say like, write a bio of Captain Kirk and save it in a text file. There you go. So not only am I getting it to write something about Captain Kirk from Star Trek, it's actually gonna actually put that in a file for me. Uh, and that's what it's done. It's gone ahead and created that and saved it in a file called Captain Kirk Bio txt so you know just the possibilities are, are are absolutely endless if you were writing uh, some kind of document whether that's an essay a book some research you could actually just say uh, write that and save it as section one write that and save it as section two and then you could very easily then even get it to you know concatenate the files together or all kinds of things like that in fact now that i said that why don't i just try that so uh, create a bio of Spock and save it into a file called Spock.txt. Okay, so same thing, we saw sure it would do that. Uh, and there you go, it's created uh, the thing. Spock is a fictional character and it's going to put it into Spock.txt and I've created it and saved it into the file. Okay, create a new file called star trek.txt by combining bock.txt and captain kirk bio.txt okay let's see whether <laughs> to create a new file called star trek by combining the content so on to the file will so basically it's then written some python it's all about writing python it writes out the python does it for you and it's i've created a full file combining the kind of okay let's go and have a look at that file Okay, so there's the file. It's got Spock first and then Captain Cook. So I did say by combining Spock and Captain so that's exactly what it's done. Uh, and there is a new text file. So no longer am I opening my text file and cutting and pasting from one to the other. I'm literally just telling the computer what I want to achieve and it achieves it for me. Now, just think about the possibilities of this. As I said, especially once you've got voice activation uh, into this or just all the little automation tasks that you can do to get this, you know, doing things for you is just absolutely mind-blowing. Okay, so there it is, open interpreter, running, manipulating, reading, writing, sorting, uh, modifying data on my laptop, just because I told it to. Just because I told it to. Do that, and it goes ahead and does it. If you polish it up, if you add in some niceties, absolutely amazing. I'd love to hear, I'd love a discussion. Tell me what you think. Uh, in the comments below. This is truly, truly amazing stuff. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed uh, making it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.